morning to the council and to everyone here. Secondly, I will let you all know I am extremely nervous right now. So, I'm really <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, so, in the spring of 2009, at the age of 17, um, I became unusually sick and I was hospitalized. Uh, three days into my five-day stay, uh, I was I was told that along with contracting a bacterial infection, I was also HIV positive. Seeing as how it was by far the last thing I had expected to hear out of the doctor's mouth, I, um, I burst into tears. Um, at the time, I was sitting in my hospital bed, I felt sad, I felt hurt, I felt alone, I was afraid. I told my aunt first, um, because she has been the biggest support I've had in my life, she's been like my mother. Um, and my parents came next. My mom, she was there for me, and my dad, who to say the least, I've had a strained relationship with, um, especially since I had just come out to him. He really didn't know how to be there for me. Um, within a few months after my hospitalization and uh, me returning to high school, I had told some trusted teachers about what had happened to me. And unbeknownst to me, a staff meeting was later held to discuss a student who was HIV positive and what should be done about him. And the fact that they were discussing how to deal with me was quite devastating because it was my first time encountering betrayal of trusted adults and it still hurts me to this day. Um, I was later um, refused service at the cosmetology department at my high school. Um, she took me into her office and she said, and I quote, we don't teach universal precaution down here, Lawrence, and I can't subject the students to that kind of a risk. Um, so, after graduating high school, I was introduced to a community that I was very unaware of. I heard from friends about a place where young gay people could find acceptance and friendship in a safe space. And this place was called the Beyond Identities Community Center, or BIC. It's a program of the AIDS Task Force of Greater Cleveland. Here I found a community of young people just like myself, and it gave me a reason and an outlet to find my voice. Um, after I graduated BIC's empowerment program, I applied to the Ohio Advocates Youth Leadership Council, which is a joint program of the AIDS Task Force of Greater Cleveland and Advocates for Youth. Um, Ohio Advocates, they gave me the tools to be a stronger advocate and the opportunity to speak to my peers and policymakers about the issues that were important to me. Transitioning into young adulthood, and thanks to the education and training I received through the AIDS Task Force of Greater Cleveland's programs, I was then hired on as a community educator for the AIDS Clinical Trials Unit of Case West Reserve University, University Hospitals of Cleveland. I love this job and I learned so much about prevention research and community engagement, but unfortunately it did not provide medical benefits and I earned too much to qualify for state benefits. So I was forced to choose between a meaningful job and a potential career and access to my life-saving medications. And because of this, two months ago I resigned my position so I could remain eligible for government assistance to pay for the $2,400 monthly cost, cost of my medication. And now effectively, I am back at square one. So based on my personal experiences, I would like to leave this council with a few recommendations. First, I believe it's important that youth are represented on future postures. The youth are now. As a young person directly impacted by broad policies, I can speak to the realities of, every, of the everyday practices of these decisions. Young people have a right to influence the policies that affect them and are in the best position to recommend what is needed to assist them. It is also my recommendation that the council have representation from providers that directly serve you, such as pediatricians and social workers. It has been my experience because I, um, I'm lucky enough to be able to receive world-class health care at Cleveland Clinic that they care enough to not only, add, not only see me as a patient but to see me as a human being. And they ask me not just, you know, how are my feelings? They ask me how, how are you doing mentally? What's going on in your life? Are you dating anybody? You know, just being treating me like I'm a young person. I'm just a person too, not just a, a file number, as it would be. Um, also, secondly, I'd like to recommend participation from the United States Department of Education. One second, I lost my place. <laughs> Yes, secondly, I'd like, to, I'd like to recommend participation from the United States Department of Education in implementation of the National AIDS, HIV AIDS Strategy. 
As you've heard from my experience in high school, <laughs> as you've heard from my experience in high school, it is apparent that school administrators, staff, and, and faculty need access to training and education about HIV. I was discriminated against with no regards to the confidentiality of my situation. I also believe it is important for the United States Department of Education to help shape and implement evidence-based LGBTQ inclusive comprehensive sexual education in the nation's public schools. It is apparent to me that teens are still not receiving the information they needed. For instance, I spoke at a high school, at a local high school two days ago in the greater Cleveland area, and I was shocked by a couple of the questions from some of the students during the post-presentation Q&A. The first student asked, isn't the difference between HIV and AIDS that HIV can be cured and AIDS can't? The second question was, can't you only get HIV from gay sex? These were juniors and seniors in high school, and in my opinion, if that doesn't scream more education is needed, then I clearly don't know what does. Finally, I'd like, to I'd like to recommend to this council to promote a nationwide HIV anti-stigma campaign, specifically for young people and, spe and more specifically for young people of color. Recently, the CDC released that released reported that young people, <laughs> that young black MSMs are particularly affected by new HIV infections. HIV and AIDS has been around for over 30 years, but the stigma I face today and the stigma that other members of my community face from not only their families, but their friends, their church, and trusted adults is a clear barrier to open conversation and education about HIV and AIDS prevention and treatment. I also believe that it is vital to have community support from local programs such as the Beyond Identities Community Center in Cleveland that prove to be effective in relating to young LGBTQ individuals, especially young MSMs of color, in order to prevent HIV transmission. I also found that I also found it to be a safe space for us young people who are HIV positive. The stigma and discrimination I faced when I was in high school could have been enough to keep me from fulfilling my full potential. And as a young person, I am a testament to the resiliency of youth. This is particularly because this is just who I am, but also because of the support of my community. Since being diagnosed two years, five months, and 26 days ago, I've taken the opportunity to speak publicly about HIV. I've spoken at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for World AIDS Day 2010 and served as a panelist for several high schools and college presentations. I was featured in an award-winning local PSA and I've conducted several workshops on HIV 101, treatment, research, and prevention. I have visited my local, state, and federal legislative offices and advocated for comprehensive sexual education and HIV and AIDS care and service, and service funding support and encourage other young people to do the same. I am the youngest elected president of my tenant council organization, and I am also, which I'm very proud of, a state bowling champion. <laughs> <laughs> looking forward, looking toward the future, I will be in nursing school within the next year. I'll be a pro bowler in the next five years. <laughs> and one day I will run for public office. Right. The decisions made by this council and other policymakers directly affect my future and my peers' future. And a phrase by which I live and stand true to this day goes as simply as this. Decisions are made by those who show up. Mm. Well, I'm here. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much for, let, for allowing me the opportunity to speak and to tell you my story.